Hello everybody. In this video, I'll talk about the BCPNP program or the British Columbia Provincial Nominee Program. So many people have been asking about it. So here's the video you wanted. In this video, I'll talk about the overview of the program, the various categories and subcategories, and also the eligibility criteria of all those subcategories as well. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Hey guys, this is Shitan Shu from Dream Abroad. I regularly upload Canadian immigration and lifestyle videos. So if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please consider subscribing and pressing the bell icon so that you don't miss any of those videos. And now you can follow me on Instagram as well. My Insta handle is dreamabroad.mylife. Okay, so before I start with the BCPNP program, let me quickly tell you about the province of British Columbia. This was one of the most interactive maps of the different provinces of Canada. You can see British Columbia is in the orange color. It is the westmost province of Canada and its population is approximately 5 million. It's the Canada's third most populous province and its capital is Victoria. However, the largest city is Vancouver. One thing I found very interesting in uh, Wikipedia about British Columbia is that Punjabi is the second most spoken language in British Columbia. However, it's just 4.5% approximately, but still is the second most because French is just 1.2%. Okay, so moving ahead, the BCPNP program. Now it has got three different pathways or you can say three different streams. The first one is the skills immigration. The second one is express entry BC or British Columbia. The third one is the entrepreneur immigration. The skills immigration stream is for skilled and semi-skilled workers in high demand occupations in British Columbia. It uses a point-based invitation system. Process involves registering and applying online for the BCA PNP and a paper application process for permanent residency. Now in the case of Express Entry BC stream, it's the faster way for eligible skilled workers to immigrate to British Columbia. You must qualify for the Express Entry program. This is an entirely web-based registration and application process for both the BCPNP and permanent residency process. The entrepreneur immigration is for high net worth business people who can invest in and actively manage a business in British Columbia. Again, it's a points based system and the applicants must also have the required personal and investment funds. Okay, I know that most of my viewers would be interested in the skills immigration and express entry British Columbia program. So I would skip the entrepreneur immigration uh, stream for this video. Also, apart from these three streams, there are two different pilot programs, which is the uh, BC Tech pilot program and the regional pilot program. I'll talk about them in a separate video because if I talk about them in the same video, the video would be very, very lengthy. Okay. Now let's talk about the skill immigration and the express entry BC. Now let me mention the sub streams of these two streams. So in skills immigration, we have skilled worker, healthcare professional, international graduate, international postgraduate and entry level and semi skilled sub streams. Very similar to these. We have EEBC or Express Entry BC Skilled Worker, EEBC Healthcare Professional, EEBC International Graduate and EEBC International Postgraduate Substreams under the Express Entry BC stream. Mind it, it doesn't have the EEBC entry level and semi-skilled substream. This complete immigration program, you know, different substreams, different streams might be confusing for many people. So what, how I will discuss it going further in this video is uh, I will talk about the skilled worker and EEBC skilled worker in uh, one slide. Going forward, you know, I'll be talking about the second one that is the healthcare professional and EEBC healthcare professional and the third one, then the fourth one and then the fifth one. So I'll talk about the two sub streams which are very similar for skills immigration and express entry BC in the same go. Okay, now the first one, skilled worker and EEBC skilled worker. For this, you must have accepted a full-time or indeterminate job offer from a BC employer. The job must be in a NOC skill type 0, A or B. You must qualify to work in your job in British Columbia. You must have at least 
two years of directly related work experience. You must show you can support yourself and dependents. You must have or be eligible for legal immigration status in Canada and you must have a wage offer in line with British Columbia's wage rates for the occupation. All these points over here are common for both these substreams. Now the point which is different for the skilled worker is mentioned in a different color. So for NOC skill level B occupations, you must meet the minimum language requirements. I think they are very less, you know, CLB5 or CLB4, something like that. And for the EEBC skilled worker, you must have received an express entry profile number and a job seeker validation code from IRCC express entry system. This shows you must meet the minimum criteria for one of the three IRCC's express entry programs. You know what are those three programs, the uh, federal skilled worker, the federal skilled trade class and the Canadian experience class. You of course, you should meet the minimum language criteria. So if you're talking about English, you should have minimum CLB level six in IELTS or in CELPIP. Okay, now the next one, healthcare professional and EEBC healthcare professional. For this as well, you must have a job offer, a full-time job offer from a public health authority as a physician, specialist, registered nurse, registered psychiatric nurse, nurse practitioner or allied health professional such as a diagnostic medical sonographer, a clinical pharmacist, medical laboratory technologist, medical radiation technologist or occupational therapist or a physiotherapist. If you're a midwife, have, you must have a letter of confirmation from an established practice group in British Columbia. The rest all points remain same as uh, the skilled worker. All the eligibility criteria are same. You uh, For the NOC level B occupations, you must meet the minimum level. Uh, for the NOC level B occupations, you must meet the minimum language requirements. And similarly, you must have the express entry profile and you must meet all the minimum eligibility criteria to create that profile. So moving on to the third one, international graduate and EEBC international graduate. Again, for this as well, you must have a full time job offer from a British Columbia employer. The job must be in an NOC level type zero A or B. Now, all the other points are same over here. What's different is that you must have completed a degree, diploma or certificate from an eligible post-secondary institution in Canada in the past three years. So if you have actually got a degree or diploma or certificate from, uh, you know, from any Canadian institution, those are eligible, actually those are authorized or recognized in the past three years, then you can apply for this international graduate or the EEBC international graduate. Rest all things are Rest all points are very similar to the other substreams. I'm not reading all of them out again. Now the international postgraduate and EEBC international postgraduate. Now these are the only two streams for which you don't need a job offer. What you need here is that you must have graduated from an eligible post-secondary institution in British Columbia in the last three years with a master's or PhD degree in natural applied or health sciences. What are the different traits, the, like the agriculture, mathematics and statistics, engineering, they're all mentioned over here. You can read them out. Again, I would be very specific over here. These two substreams are the only two substreams in the British Columbia PNP program that does not require a job offer. But even for this, you must have graduated from an eligible institution in British Columbia in the last three years with a master's or PhD degree in any of these traits mentioned over here. Again, if you want to go for the faster process, the EEBC International Postgraduate substream is for you and you have to create the express entry profile and of course clear the English or the French language level requirements as well. Okay, now the last one, the entry level and semi-skilled substream. We don't have an express entry substream for this substream. It is only for the skills immigration. So the process would be paper based for this. It won't be the faster process. So for this also, you must have accepted a full time 
job offer from a British Columbia employer in a specific occupation in tourism or hospitality, long haul trucking or the food processing industry. Very important point to notice over here is that you must have been working full time for an employer for a minimum of nine consecutive months before applying for this program. All the other points are very similar to the other substreams. So again, I'm not reading them out. So guys, this was all the details uh, you needed to know about the British Columbia PNP program. I would definitely make another video about the tech pilot program and uh, the regional pilot program as well. Very important point to notice over here is that for all of the British Columbia streams and substreams, you require a job offer except the international postgraduate and EEBC international postgraduate substreams. But for that, you need to have completed your master's or your PhD degree from an institution, any recognized institution in British Columbia itself. So thank you guys for watching this video. I just hope that uh, the information shared in this video would be helpful for you guys. If you like the video, please click the like button and share it with your friends if you think it would be helpful for them. And also, if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please consider subscribing before moving on to the next video.